Your PowerPoint is not your presentation. You are. PowerPoint can be an amazing tool. It's extremely easy to use and with the use of the outlining pane, like I'm showing you here, you can outline your entire presentation in a couple minutes. But think about the last time you were PowerPointed. That is, the last time you were trying to listen to someone speak, meanwhile trying to read every word that was on a screen behind them. How effective or captivating was that presentation really? At some point, people started believing that when it comes to designing a visual aid like PowerPoint, more is better. But it's not. That is rarely accurate. I have one big issue with PowerPoint, and that is that it is the offspring of the word processor, Microsoft Word. This is a problem because designing a Word document and designing an effective PowerPoint presentation serve completely different purposes. This has led us to find refuge in using things like bullet points, when in reality, the excessive use of bullet points can be extremely painful for an audience. To illustrate this for you, I would like to introduce you to corporate comedian Don McMillan. The fourth most common PowerPoint method, avoid excessive bullet pointing, only bullet key points, too many bullet points, and your key messages will not stand out. In fact, the term bullet point comes from people firing guns at annoying presenters. So remember, simpler is better. No more than six bullet points per slide, no more than six words per bullet point, period. Always use sans serif fonts. Serif refers to the little extra hootie winks that you see at the ends of specific letters, and sans means without. So use simple fonts that do not have the little extras, such as Arial, Helvetica. Serif fonts, Times New Roman, are great for text editing. When you're reading something on a page, it's great to look at something with a little more detail, but they have no place in your PowerPoint presentation. I don't even know why Microsoft put them in there. Avoid distracting animation. Only add animation to a slide or an image on that slide if you have a specific reason to do so. Avoid the use of all capital letters. We've grown up and become accustomed to lowercase wording, so it's much easier for our brain to process into words. Unless you plan to yell at your audience the entire time, using only uppercase lettering is ineffective. And using color in your slideshow is a tool. Use color on purpose to emphasize specific points. Avoid colors that are too close to each other, and there's no reason to go with crazy color schemes. Black and white is just fine with the occasional red, green, or blue to bring out certain points. Using colors that are opposite from each other on the color wheel provide the greatest contrast and are the easiest to decipher. Utilize blank slides. What is going on behind you on the screen should always directly correlate to what you're talking about. If it doesn't, insert a blank slide and bring the attention entirely back to you. Don't look back. You should never turn your back to the audience. So set a screen up in front of you so that you can tell what's going on behind you without having to turn around. Always save your slideshow in a couple spots. Email it to yourself, save it on your desktop, and upload it to a web server and put it on your flash drive. That way when it comes time to present, if one or two of them falter, you have backups. There is nothing worse than putting together a terrific slideshow and then not being able to use it. Your visual aid should aid five aspects of your presentation. Clarity, retention, interest, professionalism, and finally help reduce stage fright. Critically analyze whether or not your visual aid does these things for you. Does it?